<laughs> That's what you call foreshadowing. Did we all hear the pun? <laughs> by blown away by the schlong? <laughs> Woo! That was interesting. Folks, today's episode is brought to you by Bob's Watches, the official luxury watch provider of the Smoke and Tire podcast. And you may have noticed some stories in the news recently that watch prices are coming down. That's right. After years of only up, 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 they are settling just a little bit. And while that doesn't really mean much in terms of getting a new Rolex from the Rolex store, supplies are still very short. What it does mean is it's a better time than it's been in the last few years to buy one second hand. The crypto crash has meant that places like Bob's are flush with inventory. So whether it's a Rolex, a Patel, Tech, AP, Omega, Panerai, something old, something new, something for men, something for women, something for anybody. Bob's has tons of inventory right now, and prices are a little softer than they were before. Buying a watch online can still be a very stressful experience, and that's why Bob's makes it so easy. Everything that they sell is authenticated. You know it's going to be real. The watch you see on the website is the very watch you're buying. It's not stock photography. They've got a whole studio. They photograph the watches from all angles so you know what you see is what you get and they offer a mechanical guarantee so if the watch you get doesn't tell time correctly they will make it right i love bobs they've got a big inventory they're great people you can go down and check the stuff out in person in orange county or if you're unhappy you can return uh, your purchase within reason there's some exceptions to this rule of course read the buyer's agreement carefully i recommend that but bobswatches.com slash TST. Check out my picks from Bob's Watches, my favorite items from their inventory, and take advantage of the newly softened prices on watches by buying something real and excellent from my pals at Bob's. Hit the link in the description to learn more, and thanks to Bob's Watches for sponsoring today's video. To be turbocharged or supercharged? That is the question for those seeking more horsepower from their existing motor. Which is better? As luck would have it, two kind-hearted smoking tire viewers offered their 370Zs for a comparison. Both are Nismo editions, but one has a centrifugal supercharger, the other a pair of turbos. We met on a Southern California hill on a very, very hot day. All right, well, thank you guys for coming uh, up here to the hill in the middle of a very, very, very hot August. Um, obviously, we're outside because there's some sort of sniffly thing going around. So I don't want to get it. You don't want to get it. So instead of having you ride in the car with me while I drive, which I do prefer, I wanted to talk to you out here because the owners have the stories. I really like finding out why you did what you did, what you'd change, what you wouldn't change, stuff like that. And because you guys have two 370Zs that have different force induction systems, like that's why this day came together so well. So. Jacob, introduce yourself. Tell us about your car. I'm Jacob Carson. I have a 2012 Nissan 370Z Nismo uh, with a GTM supercharger kit. It has a Rotex C38-91 uh, supercharger. Uh, you know, I was looking for a car about six months ago, trying to look for like a fun car that could be also somewhat dailyable. And I was looking all over the place. I was looking at M3s, looking at Porsches, looking at Vets and Camaros. And uh, I've always loved, been a JDM guy, uh, always liked Japanese cars. And so I wanted something small, Japanese type, but you know, the stock 350, 330 horsepower just wasn't doing it for me. And, uh, you know, so I started looking into forced induction cars and the GTM kit with the supercharger is just having that linear boost curve. So you just builds with the revs. To me, it just feels like a stock car. I've never driven a stock 370Z, but this is what I imagine it feels like just a little bit quicker, you know, I would or agree how with it that. should have been, yeah. you know, yeah. it's been awesome. It's been a, you know, I needed a couple things here and there, but other than that, I, I absolutely love with the car. The hot days kind of suck because it just heat soaks really bad. So looking into like vented hood and better oil, better intercoolers and oil coolers. But um, other than that, on a cold, just not even a cold day, just a normal, you know, 70 degree California day, it's a monster in the canyons. It's just so much fun. You don't have to worry about it. And it gets a little crazy sometimes, but it can be fun, you know? Very good. What am I going to feel when I drive your car? You've never driven a stock one. No. So so, mm -hmm. uh, so the biggest thing about my car's character is having the how the boost comes in. So 
the way like you you know people talk about a uh, centrifugal supercharger is always having boost and just building with the revs so the way this car works is you really need to be on it to keep the boost coming in and i think it's the way the wastegate works or something but um you build you put your throttle in it and then it builds the boost and then once you're flat you have all the boost you want and it just takes off now the kind of achilles heel of this setup is the stock viscous limited slip diff can sometimes lock and unlock without really giving you a warning. So that's one thing to look out for is it just all of a sudden can go and then all of a sudden it feels like an open diff. And so that's one upgrade that I'm really looking into because it, it's, it can be dangerous sometimes. I'm gonna drive Jacob's supercharged car first and that's because it's the slow one today because it only has 450 wheel horsepower. It makes that on 91 octane, which is very convenient because he doesn't have to go find ethanol, whereas the other car does require a bit of ethanol to hit that big 600 wheel horsepower number. But we'll get to that in a little bit. Overall, this car is pretty simple and Jacob only bought it in December, which is amazing. He bought it already supercharged. He did very little to it. It has the supercharger, of course, which is tucked so far down in the engine bay, I needed a flashlight to see it. It is very, very hidden. It has brake pads, uh, the wavy rotors from a company called Wavetech, I believe. Um, it's supposed to shed a little bit of weight from the rotor itself. Not that much, really. Some auxiliary gauges here, lowering springs, and a new transmission mount, which is why you hear a little bit more vibration in this car than you might want or expect. Uh, Jacob's gonna change that pretty soon. Otherwise, this car is basically as it came from factory in 2012. It's a 2012 Nismo edition, um, came with 330 horsepower, 270 pound-feet of torque, six-speed transmission, weighs around 3,300 pounds, although uh, Jacob and Alfredo think these cars weigh more like 35, so that's the rumor on the forums, I guess. It's a pretty simple car. What's awesome about these is the visibility is really good, gauges are in eyeline, the auxiliary gauges are also in eyeline, it's very nice, and it's kind of a cool feature that you don't see on many other cars is the console moves up and down with the wheel. So you always, you can always see the gauges. There are so many cars we drive today where Matt and myself cannot see parts of the speedometer or tack because the steering wheel is in the way, even though we are five inches apart in height. You know, he's up here looking down too much, I'm up here looking up too much, and we just can't see the gauges. So this, you don't have that problem. But the steering wheel does not extend. So if you're a very tall person, or if you have a really long inseam, you're gonna be way back, you know, kind of sitting back in the car, your arm's gonna be really outstretched because you can't really bring the wheel to you. I think that's enough specs, that's enough chatter. So let's see what the supercharged 370Z Life is all about. A lot of sounds in this car. Um, so the vibration that I'm hearing, you might be hearing, or you might be feeling it as I am, is a solid transmission mount. Jacob put that in, he regrets it. Please don't make fun of him on the internet. It will be changing soon. Because right now my seat is trying to get a little bit frisky with my back end and <laughs> excuse you, that is a second date endeavor. Shifter is very solid feeling. Uh, I wouldn't say short. So what's interesting is the supercharger kind of causes a bit of a surge. So when I lift off the throttle, I'm not actually decelerating as much as I'm expecting to. Like right now I'm in second, lift off, and it kind of continues, that's that momentum. Well, what's fun about them is they maintain the character of the engine. You know, a good NA engine is very responsive and, ha and should have kind of a linear power band. Centrifugal superchargers have that. The root superchargers and the screw type, they make boost from basically zero because there is just it is immediate and that's how the system works. This requires a little bit more uh, RPM before it starts making the boost. And then it goes up in a pretty much 45 degree angle in terms of boost and power. Of course, the good thing about this centrifugal system is packaging. I mean, you could put this uh, supercharger on a Miata, on a BMW, an inline six, on a V8. I mean, you can put it on a lot more engines, whereas the roots and screw type have to be on top of an engine. Handling of this car on lowering springs is fine. I mean, the Nismo is a pretty sharp feeling car, but it was not over damped or over sprung coming from stock. It felt good, it was a pretty good balance. This still has the sharp nose though. Woo, big rock, big rock. Okay. That was interesting. The stock viscous limited slip diff can sometimes lock and unlock without really giving you a warning. So that's one thing to look out for is it just all of a sudden can go and then all of a sudden it feels like an open diff. 
it can be dangerous sometimes. Hey, look, a free boat. All right, the brakes in this car are pretty good. Pretty good, a little soft at the top, grips progressively better. I mean, this still feels like the honest sports car that the, you know, 370Z was, the 350, the 240, and the, the, the original Z. Like, that is the lineage we're dealing with here. It's a great, great family of honest, reliable, affordable, good-looking coupes. Now, I don't know how loud the car is from the outside, uh, but Jacob says he's going to um, put exhaust dumps on it, so... Be ready to hear that in your town, whether you live in the same town as him or not. Brand new clutch. So as I said, Jacob bought this sight unseen from Tennessee. Looked good when he showed up and the clutch was slipping. You know, he, 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 he couldn't fly out to test it. Uh, so put a new clutch in. So and it, and it feels it. Okay. A little heat in the tires now. We got a little oil temp. Let's find out what the supercharger feels like. Yeah. So what's it, what's what's so fun about the centrifugal systems, or the actually any of supercharger systems, is the car just goes faster, but you don't really feel a surge of power. It's just like the world gets sped up a little bit. I don't think I'm going that much faster than a stock car. And then I look down and I see the numbers. And it's 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 like it lulls you to sleep, but it lulls you awake. It's a, it's a gentle, gentle IV drip that someone is just adding a little bit of monster energy and Red Bull to. You know, you think you're getting saline, and all of a sudden you're like, why am I so excited? Why do I sound like Christopher Lloyd? Supercharger versus a turbo, you have a parasitic loss, right? The turbocharger uses the exhaust gas to, to spin itself. It's kind of like a raccoon eating your garbage. You know, you're already throwing that stuff away, and it's nice that the raccoon gets to use it for something else. The supercharger takes some of the power the engine's making and uses it to spin itself to make more power. So that's more like me using the money I make at work to buy a new laptop so I can work harder, so I can hopefully make more money. You know, it's just this feedback loop, but it puts a little bit of drag on the engine. Cornering is very flat. It doesn't have sway bars or anything. I, the shock damping, I would say, is pretty good. You know, it, it's dealing with this imperfect road pretty well. This thing is having traction issues in the back. Like, I'm not sliding the car, but I can feel that I'm like one degree away from it happening. I don't know why. Third gear, here we go, from four, five. Not that quick, I gotta be honest. I th it's, maybe it's a heat thing. This has an intercooler in it. You guys can see the plumbing right now. All right, good things, the damping seems pretty good. Front visibility is amazing, even with these gauges there. They actually don't get in the way of the hood at all. Steering feel is good. This is the old hydraulic system feels pretty honest. A little bit lighter than I would like if I was going to optimize it, but the shifter is a little clunky. I'm not sure why it's kind of difficult. Like, I don't know, maybe there's an adjustment issue. Like, I like the knob. I like the way that it feels, but it just kind of seems to hang a little bit. I mean, look, it's a little warm up here, so this car is not making 450 horsepower. But what it is reminding me is that this is a good analog sports car with good fundamentals and in an, in an era, uh, era where we are just being inundated with newness that we don't like. You know, all we're doing online, car people, is complaining about a lack of analog this and that and, you know, less feedback and all this stuff. Well, if you want to, you can just go get a used 370 or 350Z, you know? Like, there's a reason that the market saw people trying to charge eight grand for a 240SX and went, hang on, um, doesn't the successor to that car have double the horsepower and cost less? 
yeah, what are we doing? Let's go buy a 350Z for $5,000. You can't do that anymore. They've, they've gone up. And I think for good reason. Chassis feels really solid. They're reliable. You know, they, they have good a good foundation. They handle mods pretty well. I mean, credit to the powertrain. They, they developed this for so long, the VQ engine. Like, they really figured out how to make it strong. These are good sports cars. Yes, they have their flaws, their ergonomic flaws. Uh, they don't have a lot of trunk space, whatever. They sound like a whale that just got broken up with and is just crying, drinking wine, you know, shouting at the moon. What good sports car doesn't require compromise, especially at this price point? It did the diff thing. <laughs> and it like hip checked. And I was very confused. Yeah. But after you explaining that, I'm glad you did. Because otherwise I would have thought I did something very wrong or the car was broken all of a sudden or your tires are made of plastic. So None of the above. Uh, it's just the way the car is. So the viscous limited slip diff. Um, I wouldn't really call it a limited slip, but Nissan calls it a limited slip. And basically, there's a uh, thick fluid in the, differen in the differential housing mm -hmm. itself. And what that fluid does is it it's like an automatic transmission. It, it engages clutch packs and those clutch packs engage your, uh, your wheels as into which one has power and which one doesn't. So when it's cold and that diff fluid, it's a, like a uh, gel. And when that is cold, then you have a limited slip diff and it's great and it feels good and the power is linear and it goes to both wheels and you go around a corner and it just slingshots you out. Now on a hot day like today, compounding with the heat soaking issues, it, it turns into an open diff on the worst in the worst way and it also just lock up randomly every once in a while. So it's almost like it, it defaults. It almost goes into a limp mode of open. Yeah. But then every now and then it will cool down enough to suddenly go, oh, I am a limited slip diff. Yep. So that's what happens. Exactly what happens. Yeah. All right. And well, that's something you got to look out for. You, yeah, you do. <laughs> that was interesting. Um, all right. Alfredo. Yes, tell, sir. Just uh, introduce yourself. Tell us about your car. Yes, sir. My name is Alfredo Alvarez. I own a 2013 uh, 370Z Nismo, gun metallic color. Um, the question is, what haven't I done to the car? <laughs> yes. Um, I've had it for 10 years. Your mod list is like a phone book or uh, like an entire Wikipedia page. <laughs> Yellow for pages. People have never seen a phone yeah. book before. Um, so, I mean, it's first and foremost is twin turbo. It's from Fast Intentions. Um, they're in Simi Valley. Great guys, great, great team. Um, when I bought the car, it was bone stock. I got tired of it really quickly. Um, I wanted something a little more, more power. Um, I was also in the market for a supercharger kit at the time. And um, when I did my research, uh, I came across some flaws with the supercharger kits and um, I wanted something more reliable um, that I can keep. So flaws, you're throwing shade, <laughs> which is fine. That's what the car world is about. Like what were the, what were the flaws or the, or the things you were like, mm, maybe that's not for me? Um, the heat soak, primarily uh, the heat soak. Um, then I'd hear about um, cars blowing up from uh, superchargers. Um, oh, is that a flower feature? Uh, and you can LS swap it. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone uh, says that. Uh, but I wanted something a little more that I, can, I wasn't going to be capped on with power. I, I wanted it to grow. Um, I wanted to incorporate ethanol as well um, and um, just make the most out of it. Um, and with the ethanol content, it, it, it brings you up to about a little over 600 horse, wheel horsepower, which is substantial. It's more for the street. Um, it's definitely more of a um, highway car, a straight line car. Um, but uh, my goals were to keep, to keep it, try to keep it as subtle as possible um, and, uh, you know, try to keep it stealthy. And What do you use the car for? Because, you know, it, it looks like a, it's a very clean looking build and it, and it looks very comprehensive. But, you know, do you track it? Is it just sport driving? Is it GT stuff? Is it, you know, runway stuff? Definitely spirited driving. Um, sometimes, uh, occasionally, I'll do the canyons. Haven't taken to the track yet, but definitely would like to do that. Um, and maybe a, you know, a half a mile, uh, you know, event or a mile event. Definitely uh, to feel the power. All right. So, mm -hmm. Alfredo, what am I going to feel in your car? Like, when you turbocharged it, how was that experience picking it up? And like, what are the sensations I will get? I think you're gonna be blown away at the uh, the torque shove once you hit about 35. Did we all hear the pun? Okay. <laughs> by blown away by the schlong? <laughs> blown away. <laughs> they weren't here for the discussion earlier and now it sounds worse. Uh, 
35, 37 RPM, once that torque shove hits you, it, you're, you're going to feel it um, and you're going to feel like you're hanging on. Today you can find a turbocharger in just about every car in a parking lot if that car doesn't plug into an electrical outlet. Um, they make more power, they're efficient, they allow you to get good fuel economy when you're out of the boost and then you have power and torque when you need that for passing or you know track stuff or sporty driving, whatever it may be. Um, it's the reason we have things like the GR Yaris that have a three cylinder engine, but it has a turbo so it makes good power. Now, this car has a twin turbo setup. Um, max PSI is at about 12 and that peaks at redline. Now, whereas the supercharged car, you know, pulls power from the engine, is kind of a parasite in that way, the turbocharger repurposes the exhaust, kind of recycles it, like when Luke Skywalker repurposed that Tauntaun into an Airbnb. Now, Alfredo has done what I would call a complete build. Exterior, interior, suspension, engine. He's done all of it. Coilover suspension, we have new front control arms that give it more camber, adjustable toe, etc. Sway bars, new control arms in the back, also adjustable camber and toe end links, bigger wheels and tires, sticky to R888s, uh, brakes, stainless steel lines, we got four piston fronts, two piston rear, um, you know, high temp brake fluid. I mean, this thing has all the stuff, including these seats, which I'm not too sure about yet. You know, this is a street car that's built to a very high level. So high, in fact, it has an adjustable EcuTech traction control system now, as well as four adjustable tuning maps. Now, I'm probably only gonna stick with map two and three today out of four. This is a tight road, doesn't really call for 600 horsepower, and it also doesn't make a road like this better. You can't use that much power here. There's not enough room. The big roads we normally film on were closed. All right, we have map two engaged. It's around 400 horsepower. Uh, traction control is set in the middle, so it's not too invasive, but I definitely don't want full off in a car with this much power, and I've been in it for 12 seconds. Okay, things right away. The shifter is easier to use, so I don't know if they have a different system. This has a Stillen Motorsports short throw shifter with this short knob on it. Stillen builds great stuff. Long ago, uh, Matt, myself, and the other smoking tire guys, we filmed a Stillen supercharged 350Z, uh, sorry, 370Z, I think. Um, the car was amazing, it was very quick, but you know they make, they make very high quality parts and uh, they sort things out well. It shows in this shifter. Okay, uh, yeah, this feels fast. This feels fast. Man, the pedal spacing on these cars is good. I do feel like I'm sitting much higher in this car than um, in Jacob's car. You know, the other one had the stock Nismo seats, which I gotta say, fit great, good bolstering, they sit low. These, these I feel like I'm about an inch and a half, two inches taller in this car. Okay, up the hill, twin turbo, really responsive, wow, 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 this is level two out of four. Oh man, the power delivery is really fun. I mean, it definitely has lag because that's what turbos do, but you feel the event arriving, like a, the buildup of a really good song, you know, the beat is about to drop as it hits red line. Fast, very fast. Yeah, real fast. So fast. Uh, <laughs> wow, I gotta. Rem I have to remember how to think. The ride is a little floaty at this speed. You know, before it felt good. This is like a good GT suspension, Grand Touring suspension. I think if I was going to a track uh, or driving, you know, nine or ten tenths on this road, it starts to. It starts to bounce around a little, a little bit. It's just not quite stiff enough. Of uh, it's not quite stiff enough to handle all of these, you know, changes. A little more weight through the steering wheel. Credit to those larger front tires as well. Turn in is nice. Alignment feels really good. Again, having that. Quality suspension means you have a lot of adjustment. You have a lot of options, and uh, this was done well. It feels like I have a lot more grip, a lot more grip. Wider tires, stickier tires. That's how that works, you know? 
A gecko will stick to the wall better than a mountain goat. This is power setting two. Power setting four? On like a runway? Now, I asked Alfredo why he went with a turbocharged setup instead of supercharged setups. Um, Frank, he just basically wanted a higher power ceiling, wanted more horsepower. You can get the supercharged systems to 600, but according to these guys, it's gonna cost you a lot more money, it's gonna be a little bit more fragile, a little bit more fragile, and it's not gonna be as reliable. Now, that's anecdotal from them, but uh, it just stresses everything a bit more. Now, some could argue the twin turbo setup is more complex, right? We have two different manifolds. We have two turbochargers. They need oil lines going to them. We have a larger intercooler. So there are pros and cons. It is a little bit more complicated, but I gotta say, on a day like this, this car feels like it's making all the power it was advertised, and the other one just didn't. It feels like a heavier car, which is interesting. Not just through the wheel, like, it's that softness. You know, the, the, the firmer your suspension is, or I should say, yeah, the firmer your suspension is, then the more quickly your inputs will be transmitted to the tires, right? That's why solid bushings, hard bushings, things like that. It's all about transmitting the message from your hands or your feet to the tire. And when there's a little bit more delay because things are a little bit softer, it makes a car feel a little bit heavier, even though these probably weigh about the same. Whoa, wow. Yeah, this this rips. This rips. You know what this feels like? A rear wheel drive GTR. That's kind of what it feels like. Man, even in third, like yes, there is a little bit of lag, but I can feel the surge beginning really early. That is impressive. Modern turbos with things like variable vanes and all that other stuff, they have they have gotten real close to making lag non-existent. They're getting very close to it, but there is still a tactable, uh, tangible difference between driving a naturally aspirated car and a turbo car. You know, when you squeeze the throttle mid-corner in an NA car, you it, it's, it's like the signal sent from your foot to the back of the car to the back of your seat is instant. You know, it is fast internet, it's an electrical switch. With the turbo, it's like just a slightly slower modem. You just, you gotta plan your corner exit a little bit and, and that can be really, really fun. It can be really fun to learn how to time your throttle input, you know, so that you accelerate out of the corner at the max speed. It's like this interesting chess game of acceleration. Okay, I have thoughts. Mm -hmm. uh, once I regain my normal heartbeat um, <laughs> after driving your car. Your car is bananas. Your car is insane. Like the great kind of insane, but it, it, it felt like it had the power that you said it did up here, even though it's, the, it's as hot as it is right now. Now, what I noticed about it is at like six, seven tenths, it felt so good. It just felt like it was soaking up all the bumps here. It was turning in nice. And then once you start going a little bit faster, the soft suspension gets overwhelmed by things. You know, the floatiness became more of a detriment than a, than a, a benefit. Um, but it speaks to what you use the car for. But man, if you, if you get this on a runway or something, like I'm very curious to know what kind of speeds you hit because it just freight trains. So Jacob, your car. Yeah. Heat soak is definitely an issue, as you said. Yeah. And I appreciate you being upfront about that and not going, my car is amazing all the time, like some yeah. people do. But uh, it definitely felt like it almost had stock power up here. Yeah. And you said earlier that you have a, your intercooler is limited. So uh, the intercooler that comes from GTM, uh, while it's pretty big, it's not the biggest it can be. So his intercooler on the twin turbo kit, the cool thing about that, they replace the front crash bar and they just put a nice little, you know, uh, steel tube and you can fit so much more of an intercooler core in there. Right. So that's definitely something that I've been looking into as well as just vented hood, heat management, you know, like gold foil, header wrap, all that stuff. Because the way the GTM kit is, I really like, but there are some downfalls of putting the supercharger. It's low mounted and it's all of the intake is right next to the exhaust. So you know, the hottest thing in your car is next to the intake, which is never a good thing. Can you package it higher up on the car? Is that a different, or is that just a different system? That, uh, that'd be a total different system. Uh, there's a company called Top Guns and they build a kit with it like a mid-engine, mid-mounted, I guess you would call it. And 
Although I don't think they have the same heat soak issues, I'm still gonna guess just being the supercharged car and a super small engine bay in the Zs, heat soak's just an issue that you, know, you have to come deal with it. The car has two really big oil coolers and just when it's 100 degrees outside, it just doesn't keep up. Right, so you just need big, bigger inner cooler. Yeah, this is what I'm hoping and then maybe a bigger rad as well. And I hope that you can get yours like cooled down because I love the character of a supercharger mm -hmm. and when I've driven them where they do make the power that's advertised like it is a very unique experience and such it's one that feels more connected to the NA powertrain yeah. rather than the turbo does like yours you're kind of waiting for this wave and when you catch it like then it's it's awesome and you're just on that ride but there's also something really wonderful about the throttle response of a supercharged system like I came in as going maybe I'll decide which <laughs> one's better and like there is no better yeah. it's totally subjective it's like if you want to make max power, maybe that's your object objectivity. But like from a driving perspective, it's like, what do you enjoy and what did, what did you want to put in the car? Yeah, I feel like if we uh, were to come back six months later in the fall or you know, do a reshoot of this, a rematch, uh, the, it would be so much better just having the cold intake temps and just the cooler air for the, for the supercharger because it does have that super linearity. And it just feels to me like a very powerful VQ motor. It doesn't feel like it has just this this instant like kaboom it's just like this wave that just it pulls you you know because your car alfredo feels like a gtr now it doesn't feel like a 370z because now that you have the same power surge and a lot of the same sounds as the gtr whereas your car jacob does still feel like a 370 that na kind of uh, response and you know just with a little bit more juice behind it yeah yeah, yeah. it also makes cool like whooshy sounds it does they both <laughs> make cool whooshy sounds yeah, yeah. which is another like really fun thing to add to the car so so thank you guys for coming up here in the heat Thanks, and Zach. bringing out yeah. your cars and, and being amenable to this, this little, uh, you know, COVID change, chatting outside, but I really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, no Thanks, problem. Zach. Anytime. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for uh, listening to the podcast. See you around. And remember, always fight your tickets. Use code TST10 on the Off The Record app available in the Android and iOS store or go to offtherecord.com slash TST.